Hey guys, we're gonna show you how we took three products and made three incredibly simple projects. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Okay, so I've got three separate applications, but we're gonna be using the same products. That's why I'm really excited about using these foils because there's so many things that you can do. So first of all, we've prepped everything. The countertop's been prepped correctly with bonding primer, and then we came over the top with the bare paint and primer. The Lazy Susan has been prepped with Rust-Oleum spray paint. I sanded it, and then I gave it two good coats of spray paint, and the cup has been sprayed also with the Rust-Oleum spray paint. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna gum and put the adhesive, same adhesive, on all three products. Okay, so the foil adhesive that I'm using is uh, an Artsyville product, and you can get it at uh, Artistic Painting Studio. I will have that link in the descriptions. Okay, so the reason I really love this adhesive is because I can roll it on to my project and it's gonna dry to a tack to where I can tap it and it'll be very sticky, but it won't come off on my finger and it'll never get um, unsticky, I guess, until I put something on top of it. So if I wanted to prep my countertop or prep a project I was doing, but I didn't have time to finish the whole project in one day, it doesn't matter. Once this glue is put down on the surface, I can wait days until I come and put the foil. One light coat is all you need of this. Now, reason, another reason I really like this is because I'm able to do this on a countertop that's got an integrated backsplash. Most of the time when you do a finish on an integrated backsplash with your epoxy, whatever finish I do here, whatever design I do here, when it comes up to the backsplash because my epoxy is fluid and it's running, it's all gonna run down and my backsplash is not gonna look like what my flat surface looks like. Doing this process with the foils, you get a gorgeous finish over the entire countertop. Yeah, yeah, come on. Kinda get the roller marks out. You wanna go one direction so that that pattern doesn't go through on your foil. All right, Leslie and I are gonna do the same thing with our two smaller projects. Just apply the glue. I'm gonna beat your you. Your roller. I'm yeah. gonna beat you. You got to roll like a brush. <laughs> she can roll when she gets through. All Let's right. See what it looks like. Roll down there in the middle where I don't have anything. See, it doesn't Yeah, roll. it's kind of spongy bumpy. looking. Yeah. And this stuff is sticky, let me tell you. And you don't have to put a really thick coat of it. One nice, even, thin coat is all you need. All righty. Okay, we'll let this dry for about 45 minutes, and then we'll be ready to go. The adhesive has gotten to the state of tactfulness. And the way we check that is we touch it and it'll actually make a popping sound, all right? And then when you pull your finger away, it's dry and it's not coming off the surface. So now we know we're at the right stage. All right, comes the fun part, guys. We're gonna start applying some foils. Now these foils come in hundreds, literally hundreds of designs. You can check out Artistic Painting Studio, her website. I'll provide a link in the comments and you can check out all these foils. I've used these foils on furniture, on walls, on clothing, on countertops. The endless, there is an endless 
amount of things that you can do. So what we're gonna do on this particular board and also the countertop is a pattern that's called matte terracotta. And it's actually gonna come off looking like a matte finish instead of being a real high gloss. We're gonna cover it with epoxy and then we're gonna put actually the matte UTC over it so it looks very real. So the foil is actually metallicized to a piece of plastic. So you're gonna lay the plastic down the ugly side, not the shiny side. And that's what's gonna give our pattern because it's gonna stick to the adhesive and then pull off. And I'm gonna lay the foil over the top. And once you lay it down, you can adjust it. If you just very lightly lay it down. And then I'm gonna take my rag and roll it over the top. Just kind of rub this down. Now I'm not really worried about these little lines and these bubbles because I can pull this up and you can see how I still have some of that foil on my plastic. So I'm just gonna readjust it and I'm just gonna rub a little bit harder. Now what I don't wanna do is go right next to that edge so that my pattern leaves a very hard edge. So I want 100% coverage. So I'm gonna come now with my scrub brush and this is about a medium soft scrub brush. And I'm gonna go in a linear pattern. I don't wanna scrub in a circle because then that pattern is gonna show up on my finish. So anywhere that I have glue, that foil is gonna stick. Check. Yep. Oh, that's pretty. Now where those little air bubbles are, you can see where the foil didn't come off. I'm just going to lay that back down. And re-rub. Oh my gosh, this looks absolutely gorgeous. It looks like a real piece of stone. Look at that, is that not gorgeous? And now, because I have a foil, it's no longer sticky. So I'm gonna come in on my second piece and do the same thing. Even worry about doing any kind of matching of the grain or the pattern because this looks so natural. I wouldn't even worry about that. I am going to put a little bit more here. All right. Now there's one little area that didn't stick here. I'm going to go back. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely gorgeous. Now there's a couple of places where I see a little bit of shine. So I'm just gonna come back over. And the little tiny pieces that maybe didn't stick the first time will stick the second time. You can see how it's pulling up a little bit. And that's exactly what I want. How much pressure are you having? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. All right, so that is absolutely beautiful. And even though we have a little bit of areas, maybe that didn't get 100% coverage, that's okay. It really looks very, very, very natural. But if you wanted to go back and re, um, I guess, rub, you could definitely do that and come back with these little bitty spots. But to me, this looks amazing. Okay, so Leslie's gonna do the same thing with her cup. Okay, so we're gonna lay our cup down. We're gonna make sure we have plenty of room at the bottom so that we can lap it over on the bottom. And we're gonna roll it up. All right, take our cloth. See what it looks like. It's got a little bit of. So those little lines mm -hmm. actually look really cool. It makes it look really authentic. If you wanted to go back and put that back yeah, over, you, just... you can just lay it back over, re-rub. And then it fills in those lines. I actually like that look of having those the little lines. veins because to me it makes it look super authentic. As she says that and I'm filling it in. <laughs> now, also, you notice we painted our projects a color that's going to complement what's on the, the foil. So if you don't have 100% coverage, that color, that background color, is gonna take care of that. So it's real important that whatever you paint your background color, that it's going to complement what's on your foil. I chose the green. All right, very cool. cool. Oh, that looks so cool. Oop, got a little bit of stuck on there. <laughs> oh, it's pulling off the plastic part stuck on there. Which we can just, is it yeah. still, yeah, we can just put another piece yeah. right got over it. there. Cool. And we can take care of that little issue. It's camo, you won't see That's it. That's right. <laughs> you know see me. Oops, All right, so, okay, so this is a good example. Let's say you have a spot that either on the countertop or whatever you're doing and you didn't have adhesion because you pulled the glue off or something happened all you have to do is come back with a little bit of that glue paint it on there let it dry and redo it and you absolutely cannot see it also if if you do this and you end up not liking it it is so easy just to repaint it put the glue adhesive again and go over it with another foil it's that simple also on the bottom, you can see where it didn't take a little bit, but you know, I normally put a sticker, my logo sticker on the bottom. And if you're just doing this for, you know, fun, you could make up your own stickers and put them on there and it covers it up just fine before you epoxy it. And you can also just go back over with the, True, with, you can. with some more. You can it. lay it flat this time instead of like I did when we rolled it. And then voila, very cool. Okay, so now we're gonna do the countertop. And like I said earlier, I really like using foils where you have an integrated backsplash or maybe an edge that's got some decoration or it's a really large edge and putting uh, a epoxy finish with a design is not going to stay on those edges. So this is a really cool way to do um, vanities maybe that you don't wanna take out or ones that have the integrated sink. Super, super easy. Same thing, same process. We're gonna take the foil, 
We're going to start at one end first. And I'm just going to start very slowly, get it in this groove, and I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. I want to keep that soft edge. And then I'm just going to start rolling it up nice and easy, knowing that if I have, like before, if I have some air bubbles, I can bring those up and address it later. I'm going to keep a soft edge there. And then coming into this. And then roll it up. There. All right, so I'm not going to worry about really putting a lot of pressure there. I'm going to check my adhesion. So I've got some uh, areas here that didn't stick, so I'm going to put it back down. Come back in. So now that foil's going to stick. There it goes. So if you are doing a large area, it does help to have an extra hand. Not that this is a large area, but I've done whole countertops with these foils. So what's gonna happen is you see how that edge is very soft. There's not a hard line. If I were to let this go down and then scrub it, I would have a very hard line. Then, I was gonna, then I'm gonna have to match my patterns and there's no way that I can match my patterns exactly. So by keeping that soft edge, kind of meshes in it, exactly. And then I'm gonna get in that edge. Now, a lot of times if you're doing a curved edge like this, you can get a little brush or you can just take your finger and really put some pressure so that you get that inside edge. Same thing with this edge here. I pulled it up. So now when I put it back down, I know that, that uh, the foil is going to be going inside of that curve. Oh yeah, that looks good. Now I'm Gonna come back and do some touch up work on here with another piece of foil. So remember, every place that I don't have any of the foil is still gonna be sticky. So I can come back with another piece that's smaller and easier to manage. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. There we go. And then we'll just... Now, I'm not worried about coming this way over that area that I've already done because I'm not gonna have a hard edge because this already has the foil and it's not sticky. So now I can just go, I don't have to be quite as careful with this piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna come in there and get that edge. Really good. Come up, do that edge here, and then roll it over. All right.
because I painted my background a lighter color than the Lazy Susan, that color is actually playing a part of this finish. I could have painted this black, then black would have shown through, which would have been really pretty because it really would have given some dark accents. Or I could have found a color that would match this almost exactly. So if I had any area where my foil didn't stick, you wouldn't be able to see it. So the background color plays a very big part of your entire finish. Now you can see there's no detectable line of where my two foils came together. Now, anywhere that I have foil left, you can see anywhere there was glue, it pulled the foil off the plastic. But I can still use any of this other foil and just start going and spot checking where I may need just a little bit more adhesion. And when you do that, you want to go the same direction. You want to hold yes. the foil the same direction. Yes. Yes. So I, because I laid it down like this, and that's the way the pattern is, I don't really want to turn it this way and start taking it off. Now, with a pattern like this, that's very random, it's not as critical. But if I'm doing a foil that's got a detectable pattern, you really want to make sure that you go the same direction. All right. This is absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm gonna come and play with it just a little bit more, get a little bit more adhesion. There's a couple of places up at the top up here. Oh wow, that's pretty. Look at that, mm -hmm. beautiful, that is so pretty. So you can go back and kind of play and find areas where you maybe want to touch up. But like I said, and there's a lot of times where I will actually use a dark background and I won't make 100% of the foil come off. I actually want that vintage look where I maybe just have that foil in a few places and then the backgrounds coming through and actually being part of the finish. So that's something that you guys can play with. I'm telling you this foil, it's a new foil uh, from Jennifer at Artistic Painting Studio is an absolute stunner. It looks like a real piece of stone. I'm so excited. So, all right, so the next thing we'll do is we will coat it with uh, clear epoxy. You can clear coat it and then be done. In this instance, because this is supposed to be kind of a matte finish type of a stone, I'm gonna come over it with the Ultimate Top Coat in a matte finish. We use the Ultimate Top Coat on all of our countertops uh, because of the added durability that provides. It comes in natural and gloss. So uh, we'll also be doing a link in the comments or in the video description, which will link you to some other videos that we've done showing you how to apply the ultimate top coat. All right, so we're gonna go mix up some epoxy and we'll be right back. Okay, guys, this is absolutely stunning. It looks like a slab of slate. And you can actually go from this stage to just putting on the ultimate top coat you don't even have to do the epoxy. The Ultimate Top Coat's gonna give a really good protective uh, covering. Um, I wouldn't do that on a countertop just because you need that extra layer of epoxy for real good durability, but you could definitely do it on something like this. We're gonna go ahead and put the epoxy on here and then we'll put UTC on it tomorrow. So I've mixed up four ounces uh, we're using three ounces per square foot of the regular stone coat countertop epoxy. Such a simple project that looks absolutely amazing. I like to use my hand.
rub my fingers so I go and help that epoxy roll over the edges. Yes, so like Leslie says, <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm wanting to use my fingers to roll over the edge is because I'm helping that epoxy to roll all the way under and epoxy is going to roll and go much easier if there's already epoxy there on the surface. So pro tip on your edges, make sure that you rub those edges and it'll help the rest of that epoxy roll over. All right. Beautiful. All right. I'm going to run my hand around. Okay, good. Okay, guys, what do you think? Holy cow. This is so pretty. And this is so easy. So easy to recreate. This one's done. You ready? Ready. All, All right. right. Leslie's turn. So I'm going to try to do this at a little angle here so Kenny can get the shot in. Now, about how much epoxy did you mix up? It's, it's about one. It's probably a little too much because I have my little cups. It's about 20 milliliters is what you should use, give or take, right. um, depending on how big your cup is. I, I probably did about an ounce. It's about 20 milliliters an ounce. Okay. So, and it's going to run off if it's too much. So. All right. So where do you get these tumbler, tumbler roller thingies? Mm -hmm. The actual tumbler? Mm -hmm. I ordered this one um, on Etsy, I believe. Um, it was the big rave. Everybody was loving them. The, um, I believe they're called Krakens. The Krakens. Okay. The we can octopus, put a link. Octopus thingamajigger. <laughs> it's called the mini, the mini uh, rotisserie. Um, but I love mine. I ordered two of them and I absolutely do love them because I had some that I had made myself and over like two year time, they started losing their levelness. Mm. Is yeah, that a started word? started to kind of, is that a word? Yeah. Um, I got one from Hobby Lobby. It was a really cheap one. Yeah. And I had issues with the really big cups would not stay level. Yeah. So. These are not cheap, but they work great. And I ordered this separate um, because it covers up your little mechanism there, the little your, mecha your mechanism. mechanism. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it covers up your little rod there so that you don't get epoxy on it, and so it doesn't quit on you. You know, because obviously epoxy is going right. to make it sticky and it's going to clog it up and right. make it stop. So all this cool. is is a little PVC pipe. Good. Um, so we will put a link to that um, in the description. All right. So I'm just going to start um, by pouring this all up and down as it rolls around. And everybody does this different. Some people, you know, uh, push it with their finger as they're rolling it around, as it's rolling around. It, it's what you get comfortable with. Now you're gonna put a sticker on this as well, right? I will, yes. I'll put some uh, little logos on it. And I always go at the top, um, the very, not quite the edge, just, I mean, the very edge, you don't want it to roll over. Um, and then to get it covered. And then I also put the very bottom edge. That way it rolls down on the bottom. So like I said, everybody has their way of new, doing things. Just your niche, you know, you get in there and do it. But your so, way is the right way, right? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's my way. So yeah, it's the right way. Anyway, so you just, not hard. You're not putting a whole lot of pressure on there. And then I take it and I feel like I get better coverage when I go both ways. I start out going sideways. And then when I get through going this way, I'll go the length of the cup. I think it's so cool that we're just using the same exact products on all three of these um, projects and getting such and really also, cool things. Yeah. If you get too much epoxy, which I had a little too much, um, just like don't when you go all the way to the top, right, take it off your finger. Because that way you don't want it to roll all the way over. Because um, it, it actually go into your cup. And then people are like, how do I get this out? Well, you have to take a razor blade and, or an exacto uh, knife and run it around the edge to get it after it's dry. Which it comes out super easy. Very cool. So, then you take your torch. I usually use a heat gun, but a torch works just fine. Like I said, torch heat gun, that's your preference when it comes to certain things.
get all your bubbles out. And when you're doing cups, be very careful not to overheat it because you will get fish eyes or, um, you know, spots that don't cover. Now, how long will you let this? This needs to turn for about six to eight hours, depending on the temperature. Okay. All right. So we'll let that turn for a few minutes and um, you can go do your next one and I'll probably torch it again to make sure in about five or 10 minutes to make sure the bubbles are out. All right, cool. All right, guys, you've seen two very simple projects so far. Now we're gonna do the countertop. Okay, so this is what I really like about uh, doing these countertops is that the backsplash is so incredibly easy to do. Same material, three ounces per square foot. Clear epoxy. All right, so I'm gonna rub it and get it all over the surface. I'm gonna come and do my front edge, but right now I'm gonna come up. Now you could use your hand. You could use a brush if you wanna do that. And I'll probably use the brush as my epoxy starts to set up a little bit. Now, because my epoxy is very fluid, we just mixed it up. All of this product that I'm putting here, or most of this product, is all gonna run down and settle here. That's why you have a really hard time creating a pattern because then your pattern runs down and ends up in this little crease right here. So doing a pattern pre-epoxy like we did with the foil is an excellent way to do these types of countertops. All right, I'm gonna come around to the front. And guys, this is how easy this is to create a gorgeous, realistic looking countertop. Okay, so now what we wanna do is I'll wait probably good 10, 15, 20 minutes, knowing that this epoxy is gonna be coming down. And all I'll do is I'll just kinda continue to scoop up the epoxy with the brush and reapply it to the backsplash for probably the next 30 or 45 minutes until the epoxy really starts to get thick and I can see that it's starting to build up on the backsplash. Now, let me give you guys a pro tip. A lot of times what I'll do on this, especially I'll do it on the front edge where, where maybe uh, quite a bit of the edge is gonna have a lot of traffic. Maybe you rub it up against it in front of a sink or something where you're constantly having friction is I'll actually come in with a little bit of epoxy, excuse me, with a little bit of epoxy, and I'll actually do that front edge only. I'll put quite a bit of that product, kind of keep reapplying it only to the front edge, and then I'll also come and apply it just to the backsplash. Knowing that it's gonna run down, that's okay. I just keep pulling it up and reapplying. And then what I let that let do is I let that epoxy sit overnight. Now, it's gonna be uneven down here, and it's gonna be uneven at your front edge, but that's okay, because now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna apply another complete coat of epoxy. Now, my edge is actually gonna have two coats of epoxy here and on the front edge, so it's gonna be very, very durable. That way, you really ensure that you have um, an abundant amount of epoxy on your edges and your backsplash. All right, so I'm gonna torch this. And like I said, I'm gonna wait for probably 20 minutes or so. I'll come back, scoop up everything that's kind of drained down here in this little edge, scoop it back up, and put it back on my backsplash. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. The epoxy is starting to set up. I'm gonna come back in with a brush. I'm just gonna kind of pick up this material that's rolled down and I'm just gonna reapply it. And I'll just kind of keep doing this every 10 to 15 minutes until I notice that the epoxy is really starting to set up and I've got good coverage on my backsplash. Also, we can do this to our front edge as well. 
Now you don't want to add a lot of heat once you've done this, because if you heat all this, all it's going to do is backtrack, make this fluid, and it's all going to run over. So I'm just going to hit it with just enough heat to pop any micro bubbles that I might see. All right, guys, so we're done until tomorrow where we'll, we will come in and we will do our ultimate top coat. And on this particular finish, we're definitely going to use the mat. Okay, it's been 24 hours and it's time to go to the next step. So what we're gonna do is on the Lazy Susan, because the Lazy Susan is not gonna have a lot of high traffic use, I'm gonna actually go straight over our first epoxy coat with the ultimate top coat. I'm not gonna put a flood coat on there. With a countertop, technically you can do the same thing. You don't have to put a flood coat. However, because technically if this was a countertop, it would have a lot more traffic than this, uh, hot items being placed on it, whatever. So I would want to go ahead and do a clear flood coat. Uh, and then apply the UTC. But for the video purposes of today, I'm gonna go ahead and just put the UTC on both of them. Now, with the cup, what Leslie's going to do is apply a logo, and then she's gonna also put one more layer of the uh, regular epoxy on there, and then she's not going to put the ultimate top coat on her cup. She likes just to keep the high gloss, uh, epoxy look and it works great for her application. So this cup is basically done except for the logo and another coat of epoxy. All right, so I'm gonna go prep my rollers. We'll come back and we'll get started. Okay, we've prepped the surface to get ready for the UTC and we prepped it by sanding it with 220 or higher grit. You don't wanna use anything lower than a 220 because what happens is those surface scratches that you get won't be covered up by the UTC. If you use 220 or higher, you'll be fine. All right, so here we go. I've already pre-done my rollers. And what I mean by pre-done uh, them <laughs> basically is I've de-shedded them by running them across tape. Now, most of the time I use the six inch, six inch little mini rollers, but because I was out, basically, I'm going to use these little tiny rollers. So obviously these handles are not meant for the little small rollers, but they work great. All right, so I'm gonna come in and I'm really gonna saturate my roller. Now we're going over with the matte finish. And I do have a video that's very, very detailed in how to do your UTC. But the key to doing this is when you put that material on your piece, you wanna put plenty of material. Don't get stingy, really apply it very liberally. You don't wanna overwork it. Pick it up, I'm gonna run around my edges. All right, so once I get the product on there, then I'm gonna come back with my dry roller and I'm gonna back roll. And again, you don't want to overwork this. All you're trying to do is kind of pull that product off, level it all out, do my edges. And again, the, it's really, really important that you don't overwork the product. If you overwork it, you're gonna get lap lines. Now, that's all I need to do. It's gonna be a little cloudy, and you may see lap lines while it's wet, but when it dries, it's gonna be gorgeous. All right, so now let's go to the countertop. Now, I like to do the backsplash first. and then we'll just roll it out. Now, 
If you're doing a large area, I highly recommend that you get someone to help you. It makes it so much easier than trying to do it by yourself and keeping a wet edge as you work. Now, like I said, I'm not worried about roller marks because I'm gonna work all that out with my dry roller. Like I said, it's gonna look a little cloudy, but it's gonna dry crystal clear. Now normally, guys, I would be standing on the other side of the countertop doing this, but because I'm shooting video, I don't wanna have my back to the camera. So it's a little backwards, <laughs> me doing it like this. Now, what do you see I'm doing here? I'm just kind of pressing on that roller and I'm just kind of feathering it out. There we go. And you'll see I have plenty of material. So I'm not pulling off too much material as I roll. All right. Okay, now the key to this, guys, is your dry rolling or your back rolling. Usually when I do a countertop, I'll prep one wet roller and for every one wet roller, I'll prep two to three dry rollers. Because once that dry roller gets wet, you're actually not doing anything except causing texture by overworking it. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys a bonus. I'm gonna do it one more time. I've got an extra Lazy Susan over here that Leslie did. And I'm actually going to roll it out as well. So I'm gonna come back in here because I have a little product extra left over. And that's a pro tip, guys. Always have something extra that you can apply to, that way you don't waste your material. You're able to really utilize everything that you mixed up. And you always have sample boards or something that you can be doing. All right. Same thing. And I like to do my edges last. And the reason I do that is because you'll notice how the edges leave a little bit of indentions on my rollers. I don't know if you can see that or not. So that's why I like to do those last. All right, come back. I'm gonna actually change rollers. I'm gonna go in with a brand new dry roller because that other roller was really starting to get saturated. All right, pick it up. Now this is, like I said, the matte finish. And I absolutely love it. In my opinion, it really does make a piece look realistic, especially if you're doing a finish like a Carrera marble or something like a slate that you really want it to look like stone. It, it just really makes it have that real authentic look. All right, so we're gonna let this dry. It'll be dry to the touch in about four hours. You can, you can touch it, but you don't want to use it for at least minimum 24 hours. We actually uh, tell our customers and we don't install countertops until 48 hours after we've applied the UTC. All right, so what we'll do is I will let this dry. We'll come back and give you guys some final flyover so that you can see what it looks like with the matte finish. I'm so excited. You're just gonna love this. Okay, guys, what do you think? Did you like what you see? Can you believe how easy and how authentic this looks with the foils? I'm totally in love. All right, guys, if you did like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for future notifications. That way, you will know every time that I post a new video. Also, 
Check us out every Tuesday night here on YouTube, 7 p.m. Central, we're gonna be doing a live. Leave me a comment below and let me know what you would like to see from us here at RK3 Designs in 2022. All right, all these products are also available on our website, rk3designs.com. Those foils and those products will be uh, linked to Artistic Painting Studio. Check out that website. She's got some fabulous products. Also, oh, also guys, don't forget, sign up for our newsletter. We're gonna start offering weekly and monthly promo codes and discounts on our products and our classes for exclusive newsletter subscribers. So don't forget to do that. All right, guys, until next time, you know what it is. Don't be scared, move forward, and be creative. <laughs>